Hey, my Rick Tech, DRG family. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, for those of you that's been following me, a couple months ago I did a video showing you a really simple, easy way to unclog a auger jam in the bullseye. That was absolutely a huge success. I put it on YouTube. I've gotten thousands of hits on it. I've got tons of people that have reached out to me via IM and, and through email, thanking me for that video that they said they'd had auger jams for months and had been trying to get it unjammed. And that technique that I showed them was absolutely a lifesaver. So come to my attention, there was actually one little piece that I left out of that video that, you know, the bullseye is an amazing little grill. But there is one little tiny thing that you have to deal with when it comes to fixing an auger jam that seems to just cause so many people just incredible anxiety and headaches trying to get this figured out. So I thought, you know what? Last night I actually saw a gentleman had posted a thing on Facebook asking how do you deal with this? And I thought, you know, it's a really good idea. Just do a video, put it out there, show you the simple, easy way to get around this so that you don't have to go through the frustration anytime you have to clear an auger jam or replace your auger motor. So let's get to it. I'm gonna take you step by step on how to deal with this little issue that causes such a huge problem. All right, so let's get to it. First thing we gotta do is we're gonna take this um, skin off of the bottom of the bullseye. This is where all your PID, your auger motor, your airbox fan, everything is housed inside this shield, so we have to remove this shield. But you don't have to take it all the way off. If you watch my other video, which I'll link up here, it shows you exactly how to go to take it all apart to actually remove the auger jam and get that thing back up and running. So let me go ahead and take this skin off and we'll be right back. All right, first thing you're gonna do is there are seven screws right along this apron. There's one in the front, two on the side, one on the end, same on the back. Remove those seven and this unit is just gonna drop down out of your way. You do not have to completely remove it off of the grill. So let me go ahead and take those screws out and we'll go to the next step. All right, once you've removed those seven screws, this skin is just gonna drop down. Just like that. That's all the further you have to take it off. Don't unplug any of the wires. You don't have to deal with any of that. That's as far as you need to go is just drop it down that, that, that way right there. Now I'll take you up close and show you how to remove the motor, pull the auger, and how to deal with that itty bitty little problem that is just so frustrating. So let's go up close and take a look. Okay, so looking straight into the shield that you just dropped, this is your auger motor. So if your auger motor ever goes up, this is the auger motor you have to replace. It's very simple, it is not bolted in, and it only has one set of wires coming off the side, a yellow and a white that goes into this plug-in. You can clip these, unplug it. This motor actually, when you pull right back here, you'll see that little cotter key. That is the problem that causes so many headaches when it comes to trying to fix this, whether it's getting an auger jam or whether it's replacing the auger motor. That is the biggest pain in the butt. So let me show you how to get around all those problems and make this extremely simple to deal with. All right, so let's go back up. All right, so the very first thing you have to do is remove that little cotter key. All right, this right here is the biggest issue you have to deal with when it comes to getting an auger unjammed or replacing your auger motor. This thing has caused so many Rectech bullseye owners to just want to pull their hair out. So I'm going to show you the easy way to put this back in and save you all that frustration. Okay, so let's say you have it torn down this far and you have an auger jam and you need to clear the auger. The best thing to do is watch the video that I'll link here at the top. Watch that video, it'll show you exactly how to clean it. It's incredibly easy. All you need is a piece of weld wire and a drill and it take you several minutes, maybe a little longer, depending on just how bad your jam is, but I can pretty much guarantee you, you will get it unjammed. So let's go back to how you deal with putting the pin in. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and tear this down like you had to replace your auger or you had an auger jam. So I'm gonna tear it down to, to that point so you can see how we put it back together. So stay tuned. So let's just assume that your auger motor went up. You had to pull the pin out. You had to slide your auger motor off, lay it down out of the way. You're going to remove or loosen up. You don't have to take them completely out. The two set screws that are on both sides of your auger bushing, loosen those up, but don't take them all the way out. So just screw them back till they're almost completely out. on both sides. All right. And your wiring should be clipped together with a little zip tie. Just cut those little zip ties. All right, that's gonna give you a little extra leeway with your auger motor. So just hang that out of the way, grab a hold of the auger and just slide it straight out. Just like that. Now at this point, if you had an auger jam, you could take this all the way out. You could vacuum out the tube, get it all clean, clean your auger, prepare it to go back in. But this is the trick to help you not have to yell and scream and carry on every time you try to put this pin back in. The best way to do it is stick the auger back in about halfway. Take your auger motor, put it on your auger. Then with the auger out like that, where you have full access, it is extremely easy to put this pin back in. Just like that. So once you have the pin back in, you can slide the entire assembly right back into the housing, bushing and all, but keep the bushing flush with the outside of the tube, just like that. So the bushing is just flush with the outside or out just a little bit. Now, all you have to do is tighten up these two little three thirty seconds bushing bolts one on each side. So tighten up this one. Okay, so now that you have the motor back in, the two set screws holding the bushing in place, tighten back up. All you have to do now is put your wiring back together. It's pretty much gonna stay in place. Put a zip tie around them. You're definitely gonna to wanna to put a zip tie back on these because you don't want these wires moving around they can eventually move and stop your fans from moving. So just stick a zip tie around it to tie them back together, cut off the excess. And now you're ready to actually put the skin back up. Just like that, put your screws back in and you'll be done. Hold tight, let me take care of that. All right, so as you can see, it's all back together now. Let's just go over the steps. If you have to replace your auger motor because it went up or you have an auger jam, in any case, you're gonna have to remove that pin and remove the motor out of the way, even if you have an auger jam, because that's the only way you're gonna be able to get to the auger to actually clear it. Back to the issue here that has caused so many bullseye owners just unbelievable frustration. All we had to do was remove the, what is it, two, four, six, seven bolts to drop this skin down out of the way. You don't have to remove it. You don't have to unplug anything. You don't have to do anything, but just drop it down out of the way like we showed in the video. Pull that pin, remove the motor out of the way, cut the zip ties that hold the wiring so you get a little more wire to play with when you go to put the motor back on. If you have an auger jam at that point, refer to the other video, clear your auger jam. Loosen the two set screws that hold the auger bushing in place. You don't have to take them all the way out but you do have to almost take them all the way out, but I always leave them in because I don't want to lose them. They're very small. At that point, you should be able to grab the auger and just pull it with the bushing right out of the hole. Clean everything up, put the auger halfway back into the auger tube, 
slide your motor onto the end, put the key in then, when you've got all this room to work around it, put that slip key in, slide it back in. It's very easy to tighten up the two bushing screws and you're done. Put the zip tie back around the wires, make sure that the wires are away from any of the fans so that it doesn't stop the auger from turning. Put your seven screws back on and you are back up and running. Literally, this video obviously took me longer because I'm going step by step, but if I was doing this in real time, it takes less than five minutes. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope it helps a lot of people out there. God bless you guys. I'll see you on our next video. And if there's anything else that you need help with that you're not sure about, if you post it on Facebook, we will try to do a video for you to help you out. That's what we love to do here at DRG. Thank you guys so much. God bless you. I'll see you on our next video.